Today will definitely be the most captivating day at Starbase in over three months. Take a look at this. Pretty cool shot, isn't it? Incredible. SpaceX created this in the initial activation of the water deluge system last week. But things are getting even more insane as a full pressure test of the new Starship Flame Deflector is planned for today. This will be amazing and I can't wait to see this test in action. A full pressure test involves subjecting the flame deflector to realistic and challenging conditions that simulate the actual pressures experienced during rocket engine firings. This comprehensive examination assesses the deflector's structural integrity and ability to effectively redirect the exhaust plume, preventing any potential damage to the rocket or the launch infrastructure. However, this doesn't mean that there will be a static fire today. Actually, there was a single single SPMT moved to the launch complex, likely to remove the orbital launch mount work platform from under the table. However, after moving B9's transport stand to the D2 gate and back to the same place it was earlier, the SPMT is now leaving the launch site. And if you're worried about B9's Raptors, based on the image, the streams are angled radially outward from the center of the pad. At three times the power of the test images, that still doesn't contact the bottom of the OLM, much less the booster's underside. If today's test goes well, the next step in the process will likely involve a static fire test where the water deluge system will be tested alongside the ignition of the Raptor engines. The aim is to gauge its effectiveness in countering the intense heat produced during liftoff. Notably, Thursday morning on social media, KDOT shared a map of the Kansas route for SpaceX. Large pieces of equipment dedicated to Starbase are are making their way across Kansas again, taking a zigzag east to west path from the northeast to southwest corners. Equipment delivered as superloads will take up two lanes of highway on the Kansas stretch of the route, entering the state on Highway 36 from St. Joseph, Missouri, and exiting the state on Highway 56 through Elkhart. The Kansas leg of the journey in which the cargo-carrying vehicles will only travel about 45 miles per hour started Thursday, July 27th, and will conclude on Tuesday Tuesday, August 1st. In the end, Starbase teams continue to prepare Starship SN25 and Booster 9 for the second orbital launch attempt that is expected to take place before this year's end. Musk believes there is a 60% chance that it'll reach orbit this time around. The increased confidence stems from a tremendous number of overhauls made to the spacecraft, with well over a thousand changes implemented since the last flight test. So I think the probability of this, this next uh, flight working is, uh, you know, getting to orbit is much higher than the last one. Um, you know, maybe it's like 60%. He said during the Twitter Spaces chat last month. Next, another important SpaceX event today is a powerful Falcon Heavy launch after the company's first attempt was scrubbed Wednesday. The company said that launch was scrubbed two minutes before liftoff due to a violation of abort criteria, but SpaceX did not specify the issue. Falcon Heavy is now scheduled to lift off Friday during a 99-minute window that opens at 11.04 p.m. EDT from Path 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. If that initial launch wasn't scrubbed, SpaceX on Thursday night could have broken a record that stood for more than half a century, with back-to-back -back launches that had been set to fly from Florida's space coast. SpaceX was set to launch a Falcon 9 rocket and then a Falcon Heavy rocket from Florida in as little as 45 minutes apart on Thursday evening. Space Launch Delta 45 noted in social media posts on Thursday that the pair of SpaceX launches could have broken a record set by the Gemini 11 mission in September of 1966. That NASA mission used an Atlas Agena D rocket and a modified Titan II rocket, which launched 1 hour, 37 minutes, and 25 seconds apart. This could represent the shortest time between Earth-to-orbit launches from the eastern range in our written records, SLD-45 wrote. Follow along as we attempt to rewrite the record books on the space 
Space Coast. Sadly, rocket launches require that regulators clear windows of time in part due to the increasingly crowded airspace needed for each mission. The launches would have represented SpaceX's 51st and 52nd this year. Regardless, the upcoming Falcon Heavy launch will still be a record-breaking mission. The spacecraft going up, called Jupiter-3, is the largest commercial communications satellite ever built, according to its operator, Hughes Network Systems. The Falcon Heavy is the second most powerful rocket flying today after NASA's Space Launch System rocket, which debuted in November on the agency's Artemis 1 moon mission. The Starship vehicle is more powerful than the SLS, but it is not yet operational. The Heavy consists of three strapped-together first stages of the company's workhorse Falcon 9 rocket, with the central booster topped by an upper stage and the payload. These first stages are designed to be reusable, and SpaceX will attempt to land two of them back on terra firma about seven and a half minutes after liftoff on Friday. The central booster, however, won't have enough fuel left over for the return trip and will ditch into the ocean after launch. That latter detail speaks to the immense size of Jupiter-3 and how far away it's headed. For geostationary orbit, which lies about 35,700 kilometers above the Earth. The satellite, which was built by Maxar Technologies and will serve as customers in the United States and Latin America, is scheduled to be deployed about three and a half hours after liftoff. Jupiter-3 weighs 10.1 tons, which is 9.2 metric tons, making it heavier than any payload ever launched toward GEO. When fully deployed, Jupiter-3 will feature a wingspan similar to that of a commercial airliner, according to Hughes. Today's liftoff will be the Falcon Heavy's fourth in the past eight months after launches in November 2022 and January and May of this year. And for our last bit of news today, a new concept art was released on Rocket Lab's website today, showcasing new design choices for the company's reusable neutron rocket. One of the major changes shown is how the payload fairing operates. In prior concepts, the fairing consisted of four quarters that opened outward to allow second stage and payload separation. The new design shows two halves of the fairing opening. Moving from four to two fairings will provide more reliability for the rocket and fewer moving parts. Another change is a slight design to the forward strakes or fins that help steer the rocket back to its landing site. Unlike SpaceX, which uses grid fins, the Neutron rocket will use fins that provide more lift and can return to the launch site from further downrange. The forward fins also appear to have moved further up on the rocket and the fairing halves are made a bit smaller. Further down on the rocket, the landing legs are now folded in, similar to how Falcon 9 landing legs are folded and appear to deploy the same way. As of now, it appears the only changes are to the appearance. The Rocket Lab website still shows the same performance. The first stage will be powered by nine Archimedes engines, fueled by liquid methane and liquid oxygen, and the second stage powered by a single vacuum-optimized Archimedes engine. The Neutron stands at 43 meters tall and is 7 meters in diameter at the base and slopes inwards to the top for a 5 meter diameter fairing. During an update on the rocket in December of 2021, founder and CEO Peter Beck said it would help the rocket make it back through the atmosphere by reducing the thermal load on the rocket. Well folks, that wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.